Let us review what a function is. A function is a rule that takes some values as input values and it gives us some output values. Well, it has a domain and it has a larger set, which is codomain. And the range or the set of output values is a subset of the codomain. We usually represent the function in one free variable using y equals to f of x. x is a free variable. Officially, we say that x is independent because we can freely choose values for x and plug them into the machine or function. y value depends on x. So a function from a set D, which is the domain of the function, is a rule that assign a unique element, y value, to each element in the domain. The set D of all possible input values, as you remember, is called the domain. And the set of all output values is called the range of the function. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't necessarily mean that the range and the codomain are the same. So this guy, the larger set, is codomain. This is your codomain. The range is a subset of codomain. Is a subset of domain. Let's take a look at a couple of functions that you saw in algebra. y equals to x squared. In 3D, this is the behavior of your object. y equals to x squared behaves like this. And then if you look at this in two dimension, this is the parabola that you remember from algebra. So when we're talking about the domain of this function, the domain, which is the reflection of the graph on x-axis, as you can see, it takes on any value from negative infinity to positive infinity. So you can freely choose any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. The notation that we use is negative infinity to positive infinity, and we use parentheses. For the range of this function, as you remember, the reflection on y-axis, it doesn't have any negative y-value. It starts from 0, and it goes up to positive infinity. So that's why we use close bracket to represent that we have 0 included in the range of the function, and everything else is a positive value. So this is the range of your function. The next function is reciprocal function, 1 over x. Let's take a look at the visualization here. This function in 3D behaves like this. This is the visualization here for us. As you remember, in 2D, it has two pieces. It has two portions because of vertical asymptote. The reflection of the graph on x-axis from negative infinity to 0. 0 is not included. So negative infinity to 0. Then for the rest of the graph, from 0 to positive infinity. And again, 0 is not included. So if you were to write this in mathematical notation, you get negative infinity 0 on the left-hand side. From right-hand side, you have 0 to positive infinity. To join these two, we use union. What about the range of this function? Well, for the range, we look at the reflection on y-axis. So as you can see, from negative infinity to zero, 
zero is not included, zero to positive infinity. So again, if you were to write this in mathematical notation, negative infinity to zero, union, zero to positive infinity. So for this special function, the, the domain and range are both the same. I highly encourage you to take a look at your parent functions. Remember the behavior, the graph, the domain, the range. In multivariable calculus, we are just extending the function. It means that we are adding more variables. If you have constant function, f of x is equal to c. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. You can basically look at the graph of this function. Domain negative infinity to positive infinity. That's how you write it this way. The range is a single value. For the range, the y value is just this single number. So you can write the range as post interval c, or you can say that, hey, the range is the set including zero. The inverse function is not defined for this function. Why is that? Because it's not one to one. This function is even function. In general form, you have ay plus b equal to zero. This is a flat function. Slope is equal to zero. That's why you don't see any x. Okay, perfect. Let's go to the next function, linear function. As you remember, this is the general form for a linear function. The domain starts from negative infinity, goes to positive infinity, and the range, the same. from negative infinity to positive infinity is the range. And it happens that the inverse of this function is itself. This function is odd. And in general form, you have ax plus by plus c equal to zero. You can write it in slope intercept form and so. Next function is quadratic function. For the quadratic function, as we discussed before, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is zero to positive infinity. And if you just consider zero to positive infinity, you can define the inverse of this function, which is square root function. And this is example of even function. In general form, you have ax squared plus by plus cx plus d equal to zero. Next function, square root function. For the square root function, if you look at the reflection of the graph on x-axis, the domain starts from zero, goes to positive infinity. So this is the domain. And for the range of the function, as you can see, it is again zero to positive infinity. So square root can take on just zero and positive values. Since it's one-to-one -one function, the inverse function is x squared. You have general form, as you remember. You can write it as a times square root of b, x minus h, plus k. Next function, logarithmic function. Well, this is a popular function. The domain is 0 to positive infinity and zero is not included. Be careful about the domain of logarithmic function. The range is negative infinity to positive infinity. The inverse function is exponential function. If it's just the standard log, we get 10 to the x, and if it's a length function, you get e to the x. The general form for this function is a log of b times x minus h plus k. So what is a two-variable function now? 
when you're talking about the two variable function, you're basically adding another free variable. A function in two variable takes x and y, and it gives you a real value that is denoted by f of x and y, which is on, for example, z-axis. The domain of the function is the set of all ordered pair everybody. It is not just one value, ordered pair. So when you see ordered pair here, it means that the domain is a subset of plane. The range is just a bunch of numbers, which is subset of real value, real line. In this case, you can say, hey, z-axis. So again, this function is defined on the plane or some part of the plane. That's why you see the domain D as part of the plane. The function takes on values from the domain and it gives you some real values on Z axis, which is basically the real line. So define a three variable function. You can basically say, hey, the domain is a triple X, Y, Z and the output value is a single real value, then you take the collection, which is going to be a subset of the fourth dimension, which is real line again. Take a look at this function, x squared plus y squared, a paraboloid. So this is the behavior of this surface. You learn this in elementary calculus. This looks like a ball. This function has two free variables. X and Y are free variables. What is the domain of this function? Do I have any restriction on X and Y? There is no restriction on X and Y, everybody. We can freely choose any value for X and Y. So, the domain of the function is basically x, y, plane. The domain is plane itself. This is basically this flat plane down here. And for the range, it's all positive z value along with zero. So this is your range. You can represent this by positive real values union with zero. So again, to represent the domain, the domain can be written as the set of all x and y's such that you have the definition of the function x squared plus y squared. I can freely substitute anything for x and y. There is no restriction here. No restriction. Why is that? Because if I plug in 0 and 0, I get 0 back. If I plug in 1 and negative 2, I get 5 back. If I plug in different values, square root, fractions, anything that you can consider, you get some output values back. So the domain is basically the plane itself. But mathematically, the plane is represented by the Cartesian product between R and itself which is, in simplified form, is denoted by R squared. R squared is the plane, which is, again, is this flat plane down here. And again, the range is the set of 
output values. Output values start from zero and it goes up, which is basically on the Z axis. But it doesn't go to the negative part. It starts from zero and it goes to positive infinity. So you can represent range as both bracket zero to positive infinity as well. If you want to represent this as interval, it is, let me fix this. Here, it is negative infinity to positive infinity, which represents the real line Cartesian product with negative infinity to positive infinity, which is again representing the real line. So I either in interval form or using the real line form or just use the simplified version R squared. These are all meaning that you have the plane.